We hear in our scriptures today both Jesus and the prophet Zephaniah talking about the interior of the person, the motivation that's going on within them. And we hear um, Jesus talking about these two sons, the first who refuses to do his father's will, but then later changes his mind, or we could say repents, and then goes and does the will of the father. The second is one who is giving lip service, says yes, but in the heart has absolutely no intention of actually doing it. Or they may think they've said yes to it, but this particular son doesn't actually choose to act. We've been speaking recently, too, about the need to act on God's word. Just to know it doesn't do us much good. But we want to be sure that we see a a small danger in the spiritual life for all of us. And that is the times where we um, consider ourselves righteous simply for hearing the word of God. These words from the book of the prophet Zephaniah, woe to the city rebellious and polluted to the tyrannical city. Now this was a huge slap in the face to Jerusalem. She hears no voice, accepts no correction, and the Lord she has not trusted. To her God she has not drawn near. And all of us face this same kind of dilemma, where we might put our trust actually more in ourselves than in God. And yet, the good thing is this. It's a part of the journey. It's when we discover this that then we can begin to go deeper in our conversion. We can begin to go deeper into what God is calling us to because we know very well in the spiritual life and the saint that we celebrate today, St. John of the Cross, speaks about the spiritual life in this way, that first God will draw us with rewards. He draws us with consolations, with the affect, And then as we grow in maturity in our spiritual life, the bottom drops out, it seems. We no longer feel the consolations of God. God allows for his tangible consolations to be removed, weaning the soul, if you would, from an over-dependency on just simply feeling good. Because the Christian life, though it is a a journey of experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit and the resurrection, also contains an element of the cross and purification. And I don't know anybody who thinks that the cross is comfortable. Raise your hand if you think that the cross is comfortable. No, none of us. None of us raise our hands. One of the most important things for us in the spiritual life is to recognize that we cannot force God to console us. And when there's an absence of consolation in those dark nights, we want to have faith that God has not abandoned us, but that God is working interiorly in such a way that our senses don't pick it up. Because again, we want to remember, human nature is that the senses are typically geared toward the outside of the person. So if God sends a consolation, it's something that's touching the outside of the person. But if there's no consolation like that, no tangible consolation or affect, then God is purifying from within, asking for deeper trust. Because this life is not a life of zero problems. 
In the scriptures, when Jesus is talking about those who listen to his words and either act on them or fail to act on them, we see that both instances, the wind comes and the rain comes and the flood comes, in both instances, trials and tribulations come to both. Yes, it may be true that if we're walking with God, God might spare us from some trials, from some tribulations, but that doesn't mean he spoils us. We face trials. We face the cross. The question that comes to us all is, will we make the ultimate act of faith of denying that we're the ones who have everything figured out and can control everything, to then enter into what the Lord is calling us to that's even deeper. As St. John of the Cross speaks about the dark night of the soul, he, he talks about an experience of this union with God that isn't based upon his own actions. It's not based upon him being the one to meditate into some kind of grace. It's instead the complete and total operation of God. And so, brothers and sisters, we want to ask and invite the Lord in. We want to ask the Lord to give us the grace that we need to recognize when we say yes but actually mean no to him. And then to give us the grace of contrition, and also the grace of deciding to do something different and helping to say yes to God and actually going and doing something about it. And secondly, we want to ask the Lord for the grace to even more allow him to be Lord in our life. But even more than just Lord, because Lord can sound like a slave driver, for him to be, that is the Lord Jesus, for him to be our spouse, and for God the Father to be our Father, who can teach, who can guide, who can help grow, and the Holy Spirit to be our mother, who can teach, who can instruct, who can correct. The issue, brothers and sisters, is whether we're willing to let ourselves be put into the question. Those who, out of defensiveness, do not, um, can put off some of what God wants to do. And again, this is something that we all face. This is part of the human condition of none of us likes to be challenged. None of us likes to be Uh, the one who is told, hey, listen, you you might be saying yes verbally, but you're not actually doing anything. So we ask God, who is the one who can draw us into perfect sanctity, to give us every grace we need to grow and mature spiritually and in every other way, So that God can indeed transform us into his humble servants who walk in his ways and do his will. Pope Francis recently made a bit of a splash in the news when he said that uh, sexual sins aren't as bad as uh, the sin of pride. And some may have been thinking that he was not declaring sexual sins to be deadly sins. They they are. However, in the gospel, we hear that those who had fallen into those sins, the prostitutes, were more easily able to, to accept the good news. But those who had pride, like the scribes and Pharisees, it was more difficult for them to accept the good news. And our spiritual tradition from the Desert Fathers and Mothers, even to Dante Alighieri, also mentioned that among the deadly sins, though they can be mortal, though they can be deadly, some are harder to overcome than others. St. Faustina Kowalska would pray to the Lord, especially to free her from the vices that mask themselves under the, the, the guise of virtue. So 
uh, when we recognize that we have a tendency to fool ourselves sometimes, and then we ask God to step in, we could then say that truly we know what it means to be poor in spirit. And when we have that poverty in spirit, then we realize that the words of the Lord are proven true. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. God gives to the humble. He gives more. He blesses and he helps us.